and they introduced one more uh, objective function which was the next sentence prediction. So what does that mean? That during training they give pairs of sentences A and B with a spatial token called the separator token in between. Okay, so this is sentence A and sentence B and they had uh, and now the goal they also introduced a spatial another spatial token called CLS. Okay, and now what they did is that the CLS is like maybe you can think of it as a spatial token or the start of the sentence whichever way you want to interpret it. Right. So now this will also pass through the transformer and suppose your original sequence length was t. So now it is t plus 2 because you have one token for the separator and one token for CLS. So at the output again it will predict t plus 2 tokens or t plus 2 representations. Now I will take the first representation which belongs to CLS and from here you would try to solve a simple binary task which says that whether the second sentence is actually the next sentence for the first sentence. Right? Now how do you create training data for training this task? You already have naturally have sentences which are following each other say in Wikipedia. So those become your correct sentences. So I could create a sentence pair A comma B and the label would be positive 1 because A and B are uh, neighbors. Right? I could create A and this replace B by some random B from the corpus right? and in that case it would be 0. So I can again generate as much data as I want for this because the true sentences I have and for the false sentences I just need to take a sentence and replace it by some random sentence from the same article or from some other article. right? So this is how you will create training data for this and now during training you will pass it A comma B pairs along with the label and its job would be to maximize the two uh, probabilities. right? I mean whichever is the correct probability. If it is 1 then it should maximize 1. If it is 0 it should maximize the probability of 0. It right? is so a simple binary classification task. So this is the other objective that they are introduced. So one was predicting the mask tokens correctly using the cross entropy loss over the vocabulary and the second one was this next sentence prediction which is just a binary classification problem. Right? So two class cross entropy loss function. As I already said they have a separated token and a CLS token and 50% of the instances the sentence B is the natural sentence following A and another 50% of the sentences uh, sentence B was replaced by a random sentence from the corpus and it was labeled as not next. right? And they saw that in tasks which, in, uh, which require pairs of text like question answering, you have the passage, you have the question and then you want to predict the answer or textual entailment where you have the uh, the original sentence then the claim and you want to see whether this is entailed by the other right so these kind of two sentence or two sequence problems this uh, no sentence next sentence prediction loss was helpful right but these were very earlier findings uh, after that almost within a year several works showed that or even less than that that this nsp objective is not really benefiting uh, much in downstream tasks so this was typically removed after that and only the mass language modeling objective was true used in the derivatives of uh, BERT. So this is what it looked like, right? So you had the token embeddings, okay? So you had the embeddings for each of these words from the embedding matrix. So this is, as we said, the, uh, as we had said earlier, this, you have the embedding matrix, W embedding, which is a vocabulary cross D model size embedding, right? So for every word in the vocabulary, it has a D dimensional embedding. Now, in addition to that, they also had segment embeddings. So there were two segments possible. So they had two embeddings. This is, uh, so think of this as a two cross D model matrix, right? So this says that this is segment one and this says that this is segment two, okay? And then of course there were the positional embeddings which we had seen earlier, which are from E0 to E512 or whatever is the maximum sequence length. And now they just add up all of these and feed that as the input, right? So now the uh, embedding, right? Effective embedding of the word I is its word embedding coming from this matrix, is its segment embedding coming coming from this simple small matrix, and the positional embedding coming from the positional embedding matrix. All of these three added up to give like one unified embedding for the word, and that is what was fed as input to the uh, transformer. So as I let me just take a pause here and again reflect on it. So as I said that once we understand the basic transformer architecture well, right, 
understanding all these different LLMs which have come out, BERT, GPT, then all the, even the modern ones. It's fairly straightforward because you have understood the basic component, you know what is a positional embedding, you know what is self attention, you know what is masked attention, you know what is cross attention and it's all just a com combination of those components, right. So now we have this encoder layer which we just saw and you pass it through it, you have multiple encoder layers, at the last layer you will get the final representation and you will predict the no sentence prediction uh, NSP objective or sorry next sentence prediction objective and you will also predict the mask language modeling, right. So now your total loss is the loss for the mass language modeling plus the loss for the next sentence prediction, right. So this is becomes your total loss.